horned monster. He was with Melchior. There was something different about him. He wasn't a Moloch, though, right? <sighs> yeah. I'm pretty sure he's a demon. But why would the Abbey be working with a demon? He could be a Therian, maybe. I mean, there was Medissa and Kamoana. No, I don't think so. The Abbey keeps their Therians behind barriers and bound to Earth Pulse points. A Therian can't send malevolence to Inominat while walking freely. That's correct. And besides, Orthrus was already here. In any case, now we know Melchior has a mean-looking bodyguard in addition to his illusions. It'll take quite a lot to stop him. Aye. That's a fact. something I have to ask. What is it? Did you leak our plans to the Abbey? <laughs> Eleanor hasn't done anything like that. Then how do you explain Melchior and his illusions already waiting for us when we got to a ball? I promised you that I would work together with you until I found the truth for myself. I'm not up to any tricks. It's far too late for that now. Exactly what a guilty party would say. If anyone's suspicious here, I'd say it's you, Magilu. No tricks. <laughs> I don't even know what a trick is. <sighs> Enough. If Eleanor was leaking information, then Titania would surely be under attack by now. Right. I'm sure the Abbey would love to have those Therians back. But the enemy was in that village waiting in ambush. The Abbey isn't foolish. They figured out by now that we're rounding up the Therians. They'll have left traps for us with each remaining one. It's the obvious move. All right. If that's how you son. So you trust me then? No. I'm saying that anything the Abbey tries, I'll be ready for it. <sighs> oh, such a brave, determined soul. Eleanor, does the Abbey possess an art that can control demons? Not that I've ever heard of. Besides, if they could control demons, there'd be no need to resurrect Inominat, would there? Can't argue with that. But Melchior was obviously in control of that demon. How did he manage that? You can't tether them like a Moloch. And Melchior wasn't using oaths or mana to compel him. No. This was something more like mind control. Mind control? Let's say you know your target's innermost desires. You simply conjure the right illusion. Show them what would push their buttons in just the right way. Ah, if you can create an illusion of something someone really wants, you can control them. Exactly. You can force a powerful burden upon your target's psyche. 
Until their spirit breaks, that is. What happens when they break? Depends on the target. They might become an empty shell, they might go wild with desire. Eeny teeny spiny crow. You sure know a lot about this. Now that you put it that way, why would I know so much about it? <gasps> what if someone is controlling me, making me say these very words? How horrifying! I believe I'll take your words with a grain of salt. Hmm. I'll end this quickly. Nothing can stop these fists! Listen, Eleanor really isn't spying on us. I was with her almost every minute, and when I wasn't, Velvet was watching her. And she's a woman who keeps her promises. She wouldn't lie to... Lafayette. We understand, Lafayette. It's Eleanor. If she were lying to herself to somehow keep spying on us, the guilt would fill her with malevolence. I see. You're right. The fact that I haven't turned into a dragon proves that. Thank you. Both of you. I didn't think you were giving them information intentionally. But there are illusionists like Melchior out there. That means we can't rule out someone recording your thoughts in secret. I don't think we need to worry about that either. Not with you and Lafayette always near. <sighs> now that that's settled, it's time for you all to testify to my innocence. That could be difficult. What? Well, okay. Why don't you start off by telling us all about the time you sold us out to Teresa back in Helleviz? Oh! Why bring up that old yam? You're a very vindictive man, do you know that? You're just figuring that out? <laughs> well, there's your proof, at least. You wouldn't make much of a spy. <laughs> she really wouldn't. Hey, that's not what I meant! You were mean! <laughs> I'll end this Sorry about that. That's all right. Pricklebore meatballs, huh? Sounds delicious. They're really super tasty. But Sis says, why's that? We used to get deliveries of fresh, delicious Pricklebore meat, but in the advent three years ago, demons had hit such a tragedy. If they only could have held out for just one more day. Artoria. <laughs>
Our town decided to make a new holiday three years ago when the Malakim appeared. We hold great pride at being the city. That explains why you'd celebrate his ascension, but... You may be right about that. Not being able to save a ball, even though he killed the demons that destroyed the village. If Lord Artorius had gone to a ball first, our city might have... We won't forget the tragedy that befell... That's right. Lives... Excuse me. My partner and I here would like to put on a comedy show if it's possible. Ah, not often you run into someone with a real fight. With pleasure. Eleanor, I'm impressed. You just have to do... Besides, if we pull this off, it could be your chance to get closer to Majulu. Did you say Majulu? I haven't seen... Yeah, her dance... I do. Her and her teacher, Valta. 
Now, I'm not saying Majulu isn't great. I worry about him pushing Majulu so much, to be honest. Huh. We don't have time to stop and feel bad for our rivals. Of course I did. And I won't... <laughs> Hearing... Well, let's get going. Again? If we're supposed to be regulars here, then why does everyone look like they've never heard of Bianfu? And what's with this magic Azam stuff? Is that some kind of spell? Uh, gosh, it's really been getting cold here lately. Are you just going to ignore my questions? <laughs> what does it matter? Aren't you too cold to worry about things like that? Does this feel summery to you? I can be cold and ask you questions at the same time. Actually, it feels rather cold. See? I said it was cold! In fact, I've been so cold lately I even set fire to my clothes! Isn't that going too far? <laughs> no, that's how cold I was! In fact, that wasn't enough, so I set the house on fire too! Your house? Why would you do that? Oh, don't worry. It doesn't bother me at all. And who said it was my house? The one I set on fire was yours! <laughs> <sighs> that's a crime, you know. Huh? What's wrong? That's not in the script. Arson is a serious crime. Well, yes, but... In the script, the punchline was supposed to be... But when I saw how much it would cost to replace them, I got the chills. Yeah, but I got into the moment and thought I could ad-lib something better. You're advocating something morally abhorrent. Change it back. What's the big deal? You're getting worked up over a joke. Crime is not a joke. Even speaking as a normal citizen, I can't condone speech that promotes such a horrifically antisocial act. Oh, now you've got me all mad. I give up. For good. No, it's bad. I said I give up. For good. No, it's bad. <laughs> My deepest apologies for putting on an act about something so terrible today, sir. Well, the whole thing was meant to be about morals anyway, so how did we do? Can I just ask you one question? Are you for real? Yes, I am. I should have known. Wow, the weather's just swell. Huh? But nope, never seen a wisp of fog in this village. That means that fog would... Seems that way. <laughs> 